Sometimes college production can be a great indicator of potential future success at the NFL level. Sometimes it can. And sometimes it doesn't mean two hella beans in the grand scheme of things. Just because a guy was productive at the college level, it could have been based off of the way he was utilized in that system. It could have been uh, the level of competition or the lack of level of competition they were going against. It was the fact that they did some things that allowed them to put up some numbers, but it doesn't mean they showed up on a consistent basis on film. Uh, so you have to be careful sometimes when citing how productive a player is as to ultimately being an indication that they will be successful at the NFL level. It doesn't mean they can't be, and it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. But you think about so many of these um, air raid type of quarterbacks over the years that have flat out not panned out at the NFL level. The old run and shoot college quarterbacks, the Andre Wares, the Ty Detmers of the world, the David Klinglers put up massive numbers in college and didn't pan out. I think of the defensive end position. And I think going back in the day, if anybody remembers from Virginia Tech, Corey Moore, he was a stud at college. But he was also like a six foot one, 212 pound defensive end. He had no real chance of making it at the NFL level. Incredibly productive college player. A legend in the grand scheme of his program. Even if people don't talk about him, he was still a legend to, to this day. But had no real chance of making it at the NFL level because it was an entirely different game. Incredibly productive. Doesn't mean that production in any way was an indicator or error of potential future success at the NFL level. And when I look at a guy like Derek Barnett on film, that's what I have to balance is... The college production in arguably the best conference in the country, indicative of potential star power at the NFL level, or is it about that he took advantage of some situations and put up some decent numbers, but finding a clear-cut fit at the NFL level is a bit of a challenge, and some of the things that he lacks, uh, will those be what hold him back from being productive at a similar level to what he was at Tennessee? I think that's what it ultimately comes down to. Now, here's what I saw when I watched Derek Barnett on film. I saw a guy um, that was a pretty good pass rusher. Not as skilled as somebody like Miles Garrett, Solomon Thomas, Jonathan Allen in this draft, but a guy that you could definitely classify his pass rush ability as a strength. He does a great job of getting low to bend the edge, uh, even though he's not a great athlete, so that's impressive in and of itself. He's got a good swim move to change direction. He has a spin move, even though I'd like to see him use it more, be more effective with it. He does have that potential. Maybe it's something he would be forced to use more at the NFL level. He can bull rush off of a running start. And for a guy at only six foot three, 255 pounds, uh, he's got really good strength and really good ability to apply that strength to explosive power and be effective as a bull rusher. Uh, he's got a pretty solid rip move. He's got pretty consistent um, hand usage and his technique overall as a pass rusher. Um, sometimes I think he can get a little over-reliant on trying to win on the edge uh, because he does have some refined pass rush moves. He'd like to see him balance it out more in his game, piece together potentially multiple pass rush moves when trying to get after the quarterback. But, you know, he's a guy that at the college level, he was a successful pass rusher. And... With so many guys that come into the draft, they've got so much work to go, do in terms of their technique, in terms of how they utilize their hands, uh, adding to the pass rush repertoire. It's not something you're going to have to work a ton on Derek Barnett at the NFL level because he's got that. He's got that actually quite a bit. Um, he's adequate at shedding blocks, plays with decent pad level. Um, sometimes uh, he gets too upright when taking the lineman head-on, and again, that just could be a lack of size, a lack of length. Uh, but like I said, he did play stronger than his 255 pounds would indicate that he did. But he was a guy that generally played hard, uh, put forth a pretty consistent effort. He was very dependable at Tennessee, played through some injuries but didn't miss games. I thought, like I said, week in, week out, he was a relatively consistent performer, uh, known as a very hard worker, a team leader. You don't have any real issues with him off the field. You know, when you look at a guy like Derek Barnett and all the hype in the SEC talking about a Miles Garrett and so on and so forth, you see a guy like Derek Barnett who went out there with all, all that massive media attention and was able to be a very productive player and able to get the job done. And you look at a type of guy like this and you see a play hard, work hard, try hard type of guy and you want him to succeed at the NFL level. There are some things that really give me some pause about just how productive of a player he can be. 
Uh, first is when you look at his size. I mean, six foot three, two hundred fifty-five pounds. He's not a shrimp, but is he going to best fit as a four-three defensive end? Is he going to fit as a three-four outside linebacker? Then, when you play him as a three-four outside linebacker, does he really have uh, the fluidity of the hips and the footwork and just the overall athletic package to be able to be uh, somebody you could really utilize in coverage? Because otherwise, if you don't, um, he's really limited as a 3-4 outside linebacker, at least at this time, especially because I don't think he's a particularly good run defender. Uh, he can really get engulfed sometimes when he tries to anchor. He's good in pursuit, uh, but he really struggles at times, I think, to set the edge. Um, loses contain sometimes. Uh, so when you got an outside linebacker like that in a 3-4, you know, he can get to the he can get off the edge a little bit. But he lacks for special type of explosiveness and burst that you would prefer out of a premier edge rusher. Um, he can sometimes win um, with speed and quickness, but it's not anything that shows up on a consistent basis, believe me. And it's one of those things that jumps out to you on film, especially when you watch a guy like a Miles Garrett, you watch a guy like a Solomon Thomas, you watch some of the other guys, even like a Taco Charlton, uh, when they fire off the ball, they really fire off the ball. And they've got explosive burst. And Derek Barnett doesn't have that. So when you look at a guy like a Derek Barnett, where you have some real concerns about him truly being a tweener, whether he's a 4-3 outside line, or a 4-3 defensive end or a 3-4 outside linebacker. And then when you look at some of the flaws in the game that he's not a great run defender, he's not particularly explosive off the edge, where do you play this guy? And just how productive can he ultimately be? I think it's a real question. I think it's a real concern. And, you know, I've seen his draft range kind of be all over the place. It usually has stayed for several months in the first round area. And I think he still ultimately will be taken as a first round pick, even though I don't quite grade him there. Um, but for me, in this type of draft, you look at him, he somewhat reminds you of a Shaq Lawson in the terms of you feel like he's a good football player and he was a productive football player at college. You have some concerns about that lack of real burst and short area explosiveness and quickness off the ball um, and some other things. You wonder if they're going to fit better as a defensive end or an outside linebacker. He's very similar to him. He's similar to me as well, to a Jabal Sheard. Um, but you look at the Derek Barnett, he, he's a solid player. I don't know that he has superstar potential, but I do, again, have some concerns about where I'm going to play him. I have some concerns about the fact that I don't feel he's a great run defender. And ultimately, you know, when you talk about guys coming off of the edge as outside linebackers, the number one way those guys win, even if they have a variety of pass rush moves, even if they have tremendous strength and leverage and they can bull rush, at the end of the day, the number one thing you win with on the outside is quickness and speed, especially when you're trying to get around the edge and bend the edge and get to the quarterback. And I'm really concerned about Derek Barnett's ability to do that at the NFL level. Now... Come the second round, I would gamble on that production and hope that I could figure it out and hope that he could figure out a way to compensate for that lack of real explosiveness. But again, when he doesn't have that explosiveness, speed kills. We've heard the saying for a long time, speed kills in football, and it absolutely does. Quickness and speed and explosiveness can really trump all or most. You know, mental aspect of the game is important. Solid fundamentals is also important, but, you know, if you miss it all with your fundamentals and you're not a great athlete, then you're in trouble. You can miss on some of your fundamentals and be a great athlete and compensate for that. And to me, Derek Barnett has to be borderline perfect with his technique at the NFL level to be near the type of producer that he was at Tennessee, and I just don't know what I see it. And you can look and see that I gave him a grade of an 85.5. I think he's a second-round pick type of guy. I wouldn't take him until the middle to low portion of round number two. There could be a team that ends up gambling on him in the top 20 because they like his makeup. They like the fact that he showed up to the combine. And even though he was under the weather, um, he sat there and still performed. Even though, again, you're talking about a guy at 255 pounds that ran a 4.9 when you're seeing several other defensive ends run in the 4.6, 4.7 range. Um, so I'm concerned. I... I look at him and I'm like, this could very well be a case of a very productive college player that has a lot of bust factor at the NFL level. You know, I think, though, if he gets to the right team, the right scheme, 
and they figure out how to utilize him and they coach him up a little bit. I think he's the type of guy that could be an eight sack a year type guy, but I don't envision him having pro bowl or all pro type of potential. And hence why I don't have a first round grade on him. Good player, some real areas of concern. I just think when some of the mock drafts where I've seen him going in the top 10 or top 15, and at the end of the day, he still could go up, end up going in the top half of round number one. That's just a little rich for my blood personally.